the prophecies which the Great I Am has given in His Word, uniting link after link in the chain of events, from eternity in the past to eternity in the future, tell us where we are today in the procession of the ages and what may be expected in time to come. All that prophecy has foretold as coming to pass until the present time has been traced on the pages of history. The thing that hath been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Book that I think ought to be in every home library. It's entitled Color, Communism, and Common Sense by Manning Johnson. Manning Johnson was a Negro, and he was also a member of the Communist Party. He joined the party as a young man because he honestly believed that the communists were trying to improve the conditions of his people. He was a dedicated communist. But after many years, Manning Johnson finally came to the realization that the communists weren't the least bit interested in improving the conditions of the Negro people. He discovered that instead they were merely planning to use his people, and these are his words, to use them as cannon fodder in a bloody revolution to destroy America. This is the watershed moment that has brought the world to its knees. This is the moment for liberation. Now it's time to transform. We are united, we are loud, and we are strong. We are galvanized in our global effort to fight for liberty, justice, and freedom. And we are not done. Together, change is coming. If this country doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down this system and replace it. So all right? We are pushing the real revolution. We know that the revolution won't come at the ballot box, and the revolution won't be televised. The revolution will be on the ground when the people rise up and demand something better, something more imaginative, and something more visionary. As early as 1928, the communists declared that the racial differences among our people constituted the weakest and most vulnerable point in our social fabric. By constantly probing and straining at this one spot, they calculated that eventually the cloth could be torn apart and that Americans could be divided, weakened, and perhaps even set against each other in open combat. At a time of such deep divisions in the United States, this is what happens when two opposing sides collide. Portland clashes between demonstrators demanding racial equality and counter protesters turning violent. This truck appearing to spray protesters as it drives by. Nearby, one person shot dead. Police investigating whether it's connected to the demonstrations. In Tallahassee, Florida, officers taking down this man after a video showing him aiming a gun at a Black Lives Matters activist before waving it around in front of screaming demonstrators. A Trump flag is burned as insults and items are hurled at the vehicles. Trump supporters shot paintballs from an open truck bed and fired pepper spray. The evening turned deadly when a man standing in front of this parking garage was shot. The communists call not only for extensive chaos within the cities, but for putting to the torch every village, every forest, every field, and every barn. The plan is for raging fires from one city to the next. The reason? Well, first, there's the value of sheer destruction. Secondly, it would force us to deploy our defenses and rescue units over the widest possible area. The communists point out that as long as our police and National Guard remain concentrated, they're invincible. But if they can be forced to spread out over the entire city and into the countryside as well, then they can be picked off from ambush one by one. Uh, at one point, 2,000 members of the National Guard were deployed to the city to try and stop the violence. 1,500 National Guard members have been deployed to keep the peace as the city now braces for this presidential visit. The National Guard has also been deployed in the city. The mayor has issued a curfew 
It starts in less than an hour at 9 p.m. Eastern. Tonight, the National Guard has also been deployed to help protect critical infrastructure during any protest. 17,000 National Guard are deployed in 24 states. But according to General Milley, only two states have deployed more than 1,000. There are 350,000 National Guard available overall. And for the lawlessness we are seeing, far more needs to be done. We must support our local police. Nothing can be quite so damaging to police morale and efficiency as converting every arrest into a trial of the policeman instead of the criminal. Tonight, with a mounting national chorus decrying police brutality against black Americans, there's a new call for deep structural reform of policing across the country. Many are now demanding departments be defunded, dismantled, or outright abolished. When you say moving away, are you talking about abolishing police? Yeah, I'm absolutely talking about abolishing police, transitioning um, away from the Minneapolis Police Department here locally, and investing in community-led safety solutions. Um, I'm talking about like for real, for real abolition, not just watered down DNC version of abolition. Um, we're talking about abolishing the police. We're talking about abolishing ICE. We're talking about abolishing prisons. It's about the yeah. very function of police, which originated in slave patrols and have always been used to support a racist order in the United States and the interests of an elite group of people. And so the idea then is reform isn't sufficient. What eventually needs to happen is abolishing the very function of policing. Any all-out minority revolution must create a state of crisis wherein almost all of the male population would be forced to remain in their homes to protect their property and families. The middle class is very large, but it is not accustomed to deprivation and terror. Because of its affluence, it has waxed soft. It has no stomach for massive fire, blood, and violence. When he sees billows of black smoke rising from one horizon to the other, when at night the only light he has to see by is the flickering red from flames leaping into the sky, he'll become paralyzed with fear and panic. He'll run away and hide and do nothing to interfere with the guerrilla bands as they strike at the community's power centers. Across the country, what started as peaceful gatherings protesting the death of George Floyd devolved into destruction. From New York, where police and protesters squared off in the streets, to Portland, where the mayor issued a state of emergency and a city curfew. Everyone off the streets by 8 p.m. after crowds set the city's justice center on fire. And in Los Angeles, crowds flooding the freeway, fire burning well into the night. <laughs> Manning Johnson said, Black rebellion was what Moscow wanted. Bloody racial conflict would split America. During the confusion, demoralization and panic would set in. Then finally the Reds say, Workers stop work. Many of them seize arms by attacking arsenals. Street fights become frequent. Under the leadership of the Communist Party, the workers organize revolutionary committees to be in command of the uprising. Today, across the country, in more than 100 cities, thousands of service and health care workers participated in a strike for black lives, a union-led protest with workers walking off the job to protest for both racial and economic justice in the midst of the pandemic. Hoping to avoid further violence and bloodshed, the public is to be pressured into accepting measures that will move the country gradually and legally toward communism, but without calling it that. 
The strategy of the proletarian revolution calls for the quiet conversion of our government into a communist regime, but under the banner of socialism. The uh, new program of the Communist Party on this subject has this to say. The term socialism describes but the first stage of a new society that in its full development is called communism. Socialism is a transitional stage. The criticism is helpful. Um, I also think that it might, um, I think of a lot of things. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. States, we need a revolution in order to overthrow this system, bring a whole new communist world into being that can actually ensure the rights of black and brown people. What is all this to do with the communist revolution in America? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has everything to do with it because the building of socialism is the communist revolution in America. So from your experience living under a socialist and communist regime, what do you think now in America when you hear politicians talk about Democrat socialism? I believe uh, many times I wonder, am I dreaming? Am I back in Romania? It's impossible. It's not America. Those false promises spread the wealth, free education, free health care, defund the police. It's the same type of lie, of lies, that I heard my parents were um, uh, told in order to give them the vote for the socialists to be in power. I heard the promises of Fidel Castro, and I can never forget all those who grew up around me, who look like me, who suffered and starved and died because they believe those empty promises. They swallow the communist poison pill. It's when the government gives you something, they will take, they will take from you your freedom. When I watch the news in Seattle, Chicago, Portland, and other cities, when I see the history being rewritten, when I hear the promises, I've heard echoes, I've hear echoes of the former life I never wanted to hear it again. Um, socialist government, it's a government who will um, establish a system where the government is your God, not Christ, and will um, have everything uh, appointed to Christians to persecute the Christians. A few years of violent, sporadic, and highly destructive uprisings will set the stage for the grand finale. After the stage is properly set through protracted struggle, America could be brought to her knees in 90 days of highly organized, fierce fighting, sabotage, and massive firestorm. W tym komunizmie była ogromna beznadzieja i poczucie bez przyszłości. I że każda zmiana, właśnie wolny świat, komunistyczny świat, to jest wojna atomowa, to był dogmat. Then there was this incredible moment when John Paul said those, those words, the first domino that started the chain reaction of the fall of communism. Nie wstąpi duch twój. Niech stąpi duch twój i odnowi oblicze ziemi tej ziemi. And when the day came on June 2nd, 1979, and one million Poles gathered around Victory Square for their very first mass with their Polish Pope, that day every communist in Warsaw must have known that their oppressive system would soon come crashing down. When a million Polish men, women, and children suddenly raise their voices in a single prayer, we want God. Together with Pope John Paul II, the Poles reasserted their identity as a nation devoted to God. You stood in solidarity against oppression, against a cruel and wicked system that impoverished your cities and your souls. And you won 
we can still hear those voices that echo through history. Their message is as true today as ever. The people of Poland, the people of America, and the people of Europe still cry out, we want God. If communism should ever come to America, we'll face more death, destruction, and human suffering than any people in history has ever faced at the hands of their invading conquerors. It's literally a question of life and death for all of us. History has shown us that as in the past, so in our day, that once the world reels from the effects of these movements, the call will go forth, we want God. Then the Bible says, the world shall wander after the beast. The time is not far distant when the deadly wound of the papacy shall heal and she will again bear sway over the nations of the world. It does not now seem possible, but at that time every nation, kindred, tongue, and people shall be brought to the final test of whether they shall obey the commandments of God or the dictates of man.